there is a ray of light here, and that is that the uh, chairman and ranking member of the Senate Small Business Committee, that would be Senator Mary Landrieu of Louisiana and uh, Senator Jim Risch of Idaho, they've agreed on a compromise that would uh, reinstate debt refi if the 504 program returns to zero subsidy. Uh, that is, we are running a subsidy. It was, um, I'll give you a little history about that. Um, sure. uh, the subsidy started in 2009 when, because of the high default rate in the 504 portfolio, the federal government had to contribute money to keep the program afloat. It was supposed to be a one-time deal, one year only, quote, anomaly funding is what they call it. But instead, the portfolio really didn't recover. And so even uh, this past year, we saw a default rate that required uh, a subsidy from the federal government. And as you know, in this fiscal climate, in this political climate, that's really the last place you want to be. So we've been wanting to get off of the subsidy. We don't want to walk around with a target on our backs uh, uh, and risk Congress imposing some fees uh, in a kind of a way that uh, might be a draconian. I mean, if, right. if there are going to be fees involved to do this, uh, it's best if we can have some control over it. And, so, and, and seven, excuse me, 504 has been on zero subsidy for what? Before 2009, 15 years? Something yeah, like that? Uh, almost the entire time it's been in existence. Right, and right. the situation got a little more um, front and center uh, this year because in fiscal year 2014, the 7A program not only returned to zero subsidy, but it's producing a surplus for the federal government. So it, by contrast, it just makes it uh, that much more difficult to, uh, for Congress to well, subsidize we can talk about one this, program. We can talk about the secondary market some other time, but the reason why the 7 secondary market is rocking and rolling, that's for sure. Uh, yes. But how important is this refi provision uh, to, the, to the economy? Oh, it's very important. It was a very successful for the short time that uh, it ran. It was part of the Jobs Act of 2010. Remember, this was uh, really still the depths of the recession, and it was designed as a temporary program to let small businesses uh, get their equity out of their uh, out of their buildings that they owned. And as Senator Landry has said, it's their money. Uh, we yeah. want to let them put it to use to create jobs, sustain jobs, etc. So what it did was it allowed businesses to really uh, reposition their debt, uh, get lower interest rates, save, you know, we've heard stories, tens of thousands of dollars a month, and it helped them get through the recession. The program was a little late getting started, uh, and being it was... You're generous. <laughs> You're being gracious. <laughs> Well, we're not no pointing fingers around here, but you know well, I it was. Uh, it took them over a year. Come on. <laughs> well, it, the program was late getting started, but it was fully operational for about nine months, and in that wow. time, 2,700 businesses uh, got these debt refi loans. And on the last day, I hate to even think about it, 400 businesses were left in a waiting line uh, because uh, the program had sunset by law. So. It's so successful, it would be a game changer for the industry. The compromise that's been reached on Capitol Hill is it can, it can be reinstated permanently, but only if the program is running at zero subsidy. So we've created a set of uh, a fee proposal, basically, to get us, let us get back to zero subsidy as quickly as possible. And we think it could happen sometime next year if Congress passes nice. this legislation. Well, this is, this is one of the few programs that truly has bipartisan support, and that's good to hear. Um, you know, we want to be at zero subsidy. I think that's a smart move for, for you and, and your, your trade association. Um, and, uh, you know, 504 creates a lot of jobs. It does. It's real, real. Real. Let's talk about that because uh, the name change is part of the legislation as well. For a long time, Congress has felt like uh, that 504 is, you know, not very descriptive unless you're talking about uh, the new the New Orleans area code. Uh, so the idea is uh, to give it a name that uh, has a little bit more meaning. And uh, the the one that uh, was suggested by uh, an in, a, a task force of the industry is the real estate advantage loan, or real. Uh, and uh, there are lots of things you can do with that acronym. Uh, get ready, get real. Is your bank for real? 
Uh, uh, so we're going to have some fun with it, and we're going to be running some video contests and other contests to really uh, launch this thing right and also uh, rev up our marketing and social media using the talent of our industry. You know, Bob, there are so many uh, talented uh, frontline loan officers, BDOs, uh, the uh, people who make these loans happen every day and we're going to start to get their stories out in a video contest nice. uh, the winners uh, the winners will 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 post the videos online so people can vote on them and then we'll announce the winners at our government affairs conference uh, this uh, this March in Washington nice so are have you adopted the real or does that have to be legislative or what's where are we it, on that it's in the legislation. It will not be mandatory, and I think okay. what we're going to see is a is a transition phase where we keep the 504 number in it, but let people get used to the new language, and uh, where nobody is imposing anything on anyone. But uh, we we understand it's it's getting a terrific response so far, and we are going to be providing the marketing materials to help our members uh, get this out well, there. Yeah, I think from a marketing branding standpoint, I think that's a very smart move from your, from your standpoint. Beth Solomon, Executive Director of NADCO, thank you very much for that five, excuse me, that real industry update. <laughs>